The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville host Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome back into the Wicked Weed studio. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green alongside. Time for another seven-round mock draft. We're going team by team. Reading, leading you up to the big day on Thursday. The NFL draft begins and our coverage of all three days of the draft will begin at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Join us here in the Sportsocracy. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you see all of the seven-round mock draft videos for each and every team leading you up to the big day. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers seven-round mock draft. Let's get into it. The 24th overall pick. Several mocks think that they're going to take a... Uh, or mock drafters, I guess, think that they're going to take a running back in the first round. Not so much for Jeremy. Caleb Farley, the cornerback out of Virginia Tech. I don't think they can let him get past them. The raw on him is too good. I don't think you have to take a running back in the first round because I think the whole community is figuring out the same thing I did. And, and, and I'm going to elaborate that. I'm going to do the two players at the same time. Okay. I think that the, the whole community is watching the Ezekiel Elliott thing and going, uh-oh. <laughs> Leonard Fournette, Saquon Barkley, just keep on going and go, why would we invest capital into a running back that high? Even if you like them, it's not an indictment on the player. It's these first round picks are too damn important, especially with the cap being as low as it is right now. I understand it's going to recover, but you need these cheap fifth round, uh, fifth year options on players that play important positions. Mm -hmm. Running backs, just not that damn important. Now, Caleb Farley, this is a guy that I love the traits on him. I just wish I'd seen him do it more. Mm -hmm. I opted out this past year, only played, you know, I was just, he's played 20, 24 games in three years. And I, the, the thing about him is that what I think he can do so well in the NFL, I've only seen him do a handful of times. I think he can be an elite press corner in the NFL. Here's the problem. He's played 59 snaps of press coverage in his life. <laughs> That's not a lot. That's scary to me. And the injury history. Mm -hmm. And now he's got the Rona. Second wave. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> Caleb Farley's medical. Uh, yeah. the, the only person I've ever seen that has more medical problems than Caleb Farley is my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that was humanly possible because that bitch would sneeze and all of a sudden her back would be out. So, you know, uh, Caleb Farley's had more weird medical shit happen in the mm -hmm. last six months of any prospect I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, but I do like the kid. I think he's a very good player, and I don't think the Steelers can let him go at 24. Yeah, had to have a, uh, a micro-discectomy. And uh, to me, back surgeries, I, will, I was told once by a very smart woman, who's my mother, uh, that once you're having back surgeries, you're having back surgeries from now on. It, that would concern me, but it's not just the medical that concerns teams about Caleb Farley. In the second round at 55, Najee Harris, the running back out of Alabama. And I think there's a lot of smoke about, oh, the Jaguars are going to take ETN at the top of the second. The Steelers are going to take Najee Harris at 24. I don't yep. think they are. I think every running back in this draft will be on the board in the second round. And then I think it turns into a, 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 a Mexican standoff of who's going to take one first. I think Najee Harris can be had in the second round. This is not an indictment on the talent. He's not Derrick Henry. For the love of God, stop calling him that. <laughs> He's more of a Matt Forte to me. Okay. Because I think he can be a weapon out of the backfield as a receiver. Very talented back. He's not overly fast, but he's gigantic for a running back. 6'2", 230. I think he's going to hold up well. Uh, the other knock on him, and I've heard this a lot more lately, he ran behind the best line he will probably ever run behind in his life in college. That's a little frightening. Not, say, not saying that he's not going to be a good pro, not saying any of that shit. I love the guy. I love the fact that he drove nine hours to be in a pro day he wasn't even participating in. Right. I love all the things. He's a high-cut running back. Derrick Henry fell to just about this same spot, and I think he was an equivalent, if not better, prospect. That should tell you everything you need to know about running backs. Najee Harris is a drive finisher. He finishes off drives in the end zone. I love him, and I think he's going to have a, a, a good, long career in the NFL. Third round pick, 87th overall, Trey Smith, guard out of Tennessee. What do you like about him? I mean, this is a guy that's been a high-level recruit. He's a top recruit coming out of high school. Uh, he's had some medical issues, missed some time at Tennessee. Uh, the thing about him is he's a home run hitter. Hey, this is a guy that he wants to decleat you every time he gets the opportunity to. Started mm -hmm. as a tackle, been converted to guard. I think he has tackle ability in the NFL in the right system. 
I think this is a guy that, worst case scenario, he's a piece that plays somewhere on your line for 10 years if the medical is okay. He would be a second round pick if there were not medical questions about him. Very good player, lived up to the hype to me on a very bad Tennessee team. I like this kid a lot, and I think he fits the Pittsburgh way tremendously. The first of two picks in the fourth round. The first one coming at 128. Bobby Brown the third. Any relation? Nope. No, no. No. All right. Defensive tackle out of Texas A&M. I mean, it's a big guy. There's not a lot of big nose tackle type players in this draft, and this is one of them. I think this is a guy that can be a depth piece for now. Uh, he has to learn to play with that high motor. The the good on him is very very good. He can shed blocks. You know there are times he's unblockable, and then there's times, especially against pass heavy teams that you go, well, where the hell did he go? Mm -hmm. There's just no urgency to the pass rush. There's no killer instinct yet, but Pittsburgh has a tremendous ability of teaching skilled, uh, uh, talented, athletic, not so skilled players a skill. And I think Bobby Brown would be great for them the beginning of day, uh, day three. At 140th overall in the fourth round, Monty Rice, linebacker out of Georgia. Hey, you remember the thing I just said about not skilled players and, and how Pittsburgh can mold them? Yep. Same thing. Uh, okay. This is a guy that, if he hits you, you're going down. Yep. One of the lowest missed tackle rates in this in this draft. Not a great coverage guy, but I think that can be hidden in the in, in the uh, Steelers defense. Mm -hmm. This is a fit that I really like. Uh, the the knock on him is that in coverage, you tend to catch the ball and then he just tackles you immediately, as opposed to breakups. He's not a big playmaker, uh, but in terms of a linebacker in a in a class that. If I've said this once, I've said it 40 times, I hate this fucking linebacker class with every fiber of my soul. Right. Uh, I, I, I just don't like it. I look at this and go, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with Monty Rice. I would like for him to be uh, next to Devin Bush. I think that's... Oh, a, he's not going to be. That would be a, that'd be a frightening linebacking core. Well, I'd like to have a sports car and not be 300 pounds, but I like McDonald's and I can't drive a stick. You don't think he'll ever be a starter in the league? Monty Rice? Yeah. I, I mean, he can be a starter, just not for Tampa Bay. You go no, fuck no, no, yourself. No, 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 Devin Bush, not Devin oh, White. Oh, 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 I thought you said, I, I'm no. so used to you saying stupid ass Tampa Bay <laughs> shit. I heard Devin White and I just assumed you were trying to find a no, way Devin to shoe No, Bush. No, 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 I, I think he can be a starter, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he can be an immediate starter, actually. Especially with somebody as rangy as Devin Bush beside him. My bad, I'll have to listen to tons of fun here talk about his stupid Buccaneers and fire those cannons every 14 <laughs> seconds. I hear the word Devin and I just assume White yeah. is following it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sixth round, 216 overall. Tony Poljan, tight end out of Virginia. What can they get out of him? Uh, this is a stereotypical Pittsburgh Steeler kind of pick because this dude's yeah. he's about as athletic as a wet fart. <laughs> uh, there, there is nothing about him. I mean, dynamic is not in this dude's vocabulary. <laughs> okay. But he's 6'7", 265, a pretty good blocker, and, and came out of a Virginia system that I, I could see how it would translate to what Pittsburgh asked a, a second tight end to do. He's not going to be a... He's basically a tackle. I mean, if I'm being really honest, he's basically a tackle. Uh, he's a tackle that can every once in a while accidentally catch the ball. Hands are not bad, but he does like to fumble. Okay. In the seventh round, the first of two picks in the seventh round, uh, 245th, Michael Minette, center out of Penn State. Uh, this is a guy that played a lot of games at Penn State, and I, I see him as a depth piece down the line. Mm-hmm. I don't, this is not a guy that I think can swoop in and start at center. And I know a lot of people want the Steelers to take Landon Dickerson. He's not a first-round pick. Quinn Miners is already gone in the second round. I don't know how you're going to replace the, the, you know, the production of Pouncey at center. I really don't. Mm -hmm. There are guys that you could draft. It's just it didn't fall that way. This is a guy that I think can be... Could he come in if you put a lot of things around him? Because he is a pretty skilled guy. His hands are not great. They get away from him at times. It, it, he's not a crazy athlete or anything like that. Do I think he can play in this league? A hundred percent. And he could come in and start as a he could start as a rookie. Wow. I just don't think you're going to get high level production from him. Mm -hmm. This is a worst case scenario, and basically this draft was a worst case scenario for the Steelers because every center that could be a piece for them long term, as opposed to just a depth piece or fringe starter. They all went within five to ten picks of them picking. Yeah. Is the need bad enough for them, though, to 
possibly trade up a few picks if they think somebody's going to take a center in front of them. They could. I didn't do second round. Uh, I, I didn't get into you know mock draft trades in the fourth round. <laughs> right. I just, I just, you know, I, uh, my brain would hurt after that. Uh -huh. So there is a possibility. I think you're going to be close enough to those guys. I could see them moving. I would see that being in that third, fourth roundish area because there's a few guys that I think can start at center. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I think Michael Manette can start at center. I just think he's going to be a fringe level starter. Uh, and then in the seventh round, another Georgia guy. You got him taking Richard LeConte, the safety out of Georgia. Yeah, he's a day two pick if he's three inches taller. But he's not. He's 5'11 safety going into a league that doesn't like 5'11 safeties. Mm -hmm. And he has no ability to play in the slot. Uh, I, I mean, he can and not be a liability, but he's not going to be good at it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a guy that he's he's very assignment-based. There's not a lot of big plays out of this guy. I think he's going to get pushed down because of some medical issues that he had at Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not super fast. He's not super rangy. He's basically average at everything, but he's not bad at anything. And so, you know, a lot of people are going to see him as one of the last 10 picks in this draft. There's a guy like this in every draft, and I think Richard LeConte's going to be one. Yeah. Just off what I've heard about teams that have done a lot of homework on him is that there's nothing special about him. And there's a lot of safeties in this draft that have a special quality that you can earmark them to do one thing, and you'll get special production out of it. Richard LeConte does not have that. He's just a guy that no matter what you ask him to do, he'll be able to do it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm obviously a Richard LeConte apologist. Biased. That's a nice <laughs> way of saying biased. <laughs> I mean, his latest injury issue was a car wreck. So, And there's and there's some teams that have medical issues. That's one of the mm -hmm. things that pushed him down originally. And then I started hearing the feedback of, well, he just doesn't, he's not special at anything. Yeah. But the car wreck, apparently there's some, there's some things about the medical that, with the car wreck, teams haven't had the chance mm -hmm. to examine him with their team doctors. Mm -hmm. Teams are a little nervous, and I think that's going to push him down. I think he can be a hard-nosed safety. I do, too. League. I think he can be a player in this mm -hmm. league. I just He's one of those guys. There's about 25 guys in this draft that have medical red flags, and their teams are just going to go, you know what, I didn't get to see it. I'm not burning a pick on a guy that I can't clear with my own doctors. We will have all of our instant reactions to the uh, every pick in the NFL draft live all three days here in the Wicked Weed studio. You're in the sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. Yep. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so you can get all of your draft prep videos, seven-round mock drafts for each and every team. We'll see you next time.